Hello and welcome back. In this part, I'm going to be taking you from the 1970s up to the present day. Now, 1970 was a big year for London Transport. After 37 years of togetherness, the green country buses and green line coaches were split off from London Transport to become part of the National Bus Company. The red central area buses came under the control of the Greater London Council, along with the underground system. The situation of London's buses had not got appreciably better since the reshaping plan of 1966. Traffic congestion was still getting worse and passenger numbers continued to fall. Certain London politicians had their own remedy for this. After the GLC election of 1979, Labour leader Ken Livingstone announced a policy of simplifying, reducing and subsidising bus fares which came into force in 1981. It was called Fares Fair and it saw the introduction of the zonal system that we still have today on the underground. However, this low fare policy sparked a vicious backlash from Tory-controlled London boroughs and from the Thatcher government, and it proved to be the last nail in the coffin of the GLC, which the government promptly abolished. In 1984, bus and underground services were transferred to a new body called London Regional Transport, which reported directly to the government. London Regional Transport had two main directives. The first was to begin the tendering of London's bus routes, and the second was to oversee the splitting up and privatisation of London's huge bus fleet. London's buses were transferred to an arm's length company called London Buses Limited, which in 1989 was divided up into 11 new limited companies based on groups of bus garages, which were intended to compete for tenders with the private sector and with each other. The process of putting bus services out to tender began in earnest in 1985. The tendering process brought a lot of new bus operators onto London's streets and in 1994 the privatisation of the various parts of London Buses Limited introduced Londoners to even more company names, many of which are still around today. Lots of former London Transport buses ended up with new fleet names and new liveries and the new companies started buying types of bus that had never been seen in London before. Let's have a look at some of them. In 1987, in response to the tendering programme, London Buses Limited set up some low-cost units to help win tenders under the new regime. One such unit was Harrow Buses, which was provided with leased off-the-peg buses and cheap second-hand vehicles, for example this Alexander-bodied Ailes Volvo, which was new to West Midlands PTE in 1976. Harrow Buses initially won a three-year contract for the Harrow area network, but at the end of the three years the contract was lost. The vehicles were sold or returned to their leasing company and Harrow Buses was dissolved. Another garage which received second-hand buses was Potter's Bar on the Northern Fringe, where competition with the newly privatised parts of London Country buses was particularly intense. This ex-Birmingham Volvo Ailsa wears the post-1987 London Buses Limited colour scheme and red and yellow roundel, and carries the name of London Northern, which was one of the 11 companies into which London Buses Limited was split in 1989 in preparation for the sell-off. This bus lasted until 1991, when it was sold to a dealer. In July 1989, London Northern bought nine Alexander-bodied Scania N112s to operate tendered service 263 from Barnet Hospital to Archway. They replaced some of the second-hand Ailsas and Metro buses that had been working the route up until then. These Scanias were very unlike the standardised London types that had gone before, and typical of the kind of vehicle now finding its way onto London's streets. In October 1994, London Northern was sold to Merseyside Transport Limited, and 16 months later this batch of vehicles was transferred up to Liverpool. Between 1986 and 1987, London Buses Limited took 263 ECW-bodied Olympians, and these were one of the last vehicle types bought centrally by London Buses. 
After that, the operating subsidiaries made their own vehicle buying decisions, according to the requirements of the tendering process. One such decision was London United's to buy 22 off-the-peg all Leyland Olympians in 1989 for its Riverside subsidiary to operate on Route 237 after winning that tender. Again, these were very non-standard vehicles compared to what had gone before. In November 1994, London United Busways was bought by its management and L305 passed into their ownership but was sold on for further service in December 2001. The contract for Route 292 was actually awarded to London Country North East in February 1988, but because of a driver's strike, Borehamwood Travel Services, or BTS, stepped in at short notice to cover the route. Using borrowed vehicles to start with, BTS soon acquired a batch of Scania N113s with Alexander Bodywork to use on the service, which they kept until 1993, by which time they had a number of high-profile London bus routes in their portfolio. They were taken over by the Blazefield Group in 1994 and eventually became part of RATP's London Sovereign. This is an 8.4 metre Routemaster coach built in 1962 for the Green Line network. It was withdrawn by London Country Buses in November 1979 but was bought back by London Transport in 1980 and used as a trainer for 10 years. On privatisation in 1994, it passed to Leaside Buses, which was bought by the Cowie Group, which later reinvented itself as Arriva. The blinds on this model are for Route 159, which had the distinction of being the last bus route in London to be scheduled for crew-operated Routemaster operation in December 2005. After retirement, RMC 1453 joined Arriva's heritage fleet. This model was specially commissioned by the London Transport Museum. Here's another route master on the 159, this time a standard version dating from September 1965. This particular bus found its way into a Reaver ownership via the South London subsidiary of London Buses Limited, which was also acquired by the Cowie Group in 1994. This is one of 1,700 models produced for the London Transport Museum and Acton Open Day 2006. On its side are adverts for the Routemaster Heritage routes, which carried on for a few years for the benefit of tourists. This bus is now preserved. This 9.1 metre Routemaster started life as a green bus, being one of 100 RMLs delivered to London Transport's country area in 1966. It worked from Garston Garage and passed in 1970 to London Country Bus Services who kept it until July 1979 when it was bought back by London Transport for further use in the capital. It passed to Metroline under privatisation in 1994 and was the last crew operated bus operated on Route 6 in March 2004. It was subsequently sold to a dealer and acquired for preservation. This is one of the former airport buses bought by BEA in 1967 and used by British Airways until 1975 when it was sold to London Transport who used it on Route 175 from Romford Garage. It was named King Charles II in 1991. The model is seen here wearing a special red and gold livery and carrying the East London business unit name it wore after 1989. East London was sold to the Stagecoach Group in 1994, after which this bus was fitted with a rebuilt staircase and used on routes 15 and X15 from Upton Park Garage. In 1998 it was fitted with an offside doorway and exported for use by Stagecoach Portugal. This is one of the 10.3 metre Leyland Nationals that were new to London Transport in 1979. It was privatised to Westlink, which was sold to its management in January 1994, but subsequently resold to London United the following year. It was converted to a single doorway in 96, but sold by London United in December 99, after which it saw only a handful of years' service with other owners.
Another old London transport type which appeared in post-privatisation colours was the Lane and Titan. This one, seen here on a school contract route, was one of the all Leyland Titans which came out of the Lily Hall factory in 1981 after production shifted from Park Royal. In November 1994, it ended up with Metroline after passing through the hands of London coaches and Atlas Bus. It lasted until August 99 when it was sold to a dealer. A slightly newer bus was this MCW Metro bus delivered to London Transport in February 1985. Seen here working from Edgware Garage, this one also passed to Metro Line under privatisation. It was withdrawn and sold for scrap in September 2001. Although the 113 works out of Edgware Garage, this bus spent most of its life at Cricklewood. Later on, Metro Line had to reduce the proportion of blue to red paint in order to conform with London Regional Transport's edict on tendered bus liveries, which had to be no less than 90% red. After being privatised, Metroline bought 44 9.8 metre Dennis darts with 39 seat bodywork by Plaxton on a design originally by Reeve Burgess. These replaced an assortment of Bristol LHs and Optair Star Riders. They worked routes like the 107, 251, 303 and 305 but soon found themselves being displaced by the low floor variant of the Dennis dart when it entered production. Most of them, including this one, were sold in 2004, although some lasted longer as trainers. AV9 was one of 22 dual-door Volvo Olympians bought towards the end of 1996. They were initially allocated to Wilsdon Garage for use on Route 52, where they replaced Leyland Titans, but after five years they started to be shunted around by the arrival of low-floor double-deckers. All but three were disposed of in December 2005, this particular one ending up with heading and omnibuses in Essex. This is a rare instance where the model makers got the registration number wrong. It should read P489MBY. London United bought a batch of 25 dual doorway Volvo Olympians in 1998. They were allocated to Fullwell Garage for use on Route 281. Many of them were sold after only five years to make way for low floor buses, but VA53 was one of ten kept on for non-TFL work. It was demoted to a training bus in 2006 and finally sold to a dealer in 2013. Metroline was floated on the stock exchange in 1997 and in 2000 was the subject of a takeover by Comfort Delgro, which owns Singapore bus services. SBS were busy replacing many of their nearly new Olympians with bigger air-conditioned examples and AV39, which was new in 1994, was one of a number of buses sent back to the UK for further use. It was adapted for British conditions by Metroline, who used it alongside standard Volvo Olympians from a number of garages, but it pretty soon became redundant and was disposed of to Ensign Bus in September 2005. From this point onwards, every bus you see will have a low floor and a step-free entrance. In the wake of the Transport Act 1985, an advisory committee was set up to look at bus design from the perspective of people with disabilities. And they drafted a low floor specification which the Disability Discrimination Act of 1995 made compulsory for new vehicles purchased after the end of the year 2000. 
This then set a number of standards which we still recognise today and which apply to all of the vehicles that follow. The year 2000 also saw the establishment of Transport for London, which assumed all the responsibilities of London regional transport. It was created under the Greater London Authority Act of 1999 as part of that new body. Whereas London Regional Transport reported directly to the Secretary of State for Transport, TfL is controlled by a board whose members are appointed by the elected Mayor of London. The last model we saw was from a new company called Creative Master Northcourt Limited. CMNL started making models for the British market in 2002, starting with the Dennis Trident. CMNL was a Hong Kong-based joint venture between publisher Danny Chan's Northcord company and the toy maker Creative Master. They started producing Hong Kong and Singapore bus models in 2000 and in 2002 turned their attention to the UK market, producing a number of modern image vehicles that have become highly collectible, principally based on the buses of Alexander Dennis, Scania and Mercedes-Benz. Let's see a few more of them. Perhaps the best known of the new low-floor double-deckers was the Dennis Trident, which was first unveiled for the home market in 1997, although a longer version of the chassis had already been developed for Hong Kong. TAL-134 was the last of a batch of 17 Alexander-bodied Tridents delivered to Metroline in 2000, mainly for work on the 16 from Cricklewood to Victoria. It was disposed of to Ensign Bus in 2012 and sold on to Imperial Coaches of Hounslow who converted it to single doorway. TA400 was new in June 2001 and allocated to Stratford for Route 26. Like the rest of the Stagecoach East London, it transferred to the East London Bus Group in 2006 and, like many others, transferred back to Stagecoach in 2010, by which time it had moved to Bow to work the 15. It was withdrawn and sold to Ensign Bus in April 2012. It ended up with Southern Transit in West Sussex. Before they all ended up in common ownership, Plaxton was a competitor of Alexander's and the President body was designed to compete with Alexander's ALX 400. It was built at the Northern Counties plant in Wigan and was in production between 1999 and 2005. Metroline was the first operator to take the Trident with President bodywork and TPL 259 was one of a batch of 33 delivered in early 2002. This batch was split between the 140 and the 82, which is the route shown here. It passed to Ensign Bus in 2015 and was sold to Buses Etc in Surrey. The Volvo B7TL was launched in 1999 and was the low floor replacement for the Volvo Olympian. Early examples were built in Scotland, but production was gradually moved to Sweden. Wright Bus launched the Eclipse Gemini body in 2001 specifically for Volvo chassis to compete with the Alexander bodied Dennis Trident. This one was delivered in January 2002 and was sold to Warrington's own buses in March 2012. It now carries Network Warrington branding. In 1994, Borenwood Travel Services was sold to the Blaisfield Group and became London's sovereign, which in turn was sold to London United in 2002. Now, London United was owned by the French combine Transdev, and for a while buses carried this stylish London United type logo seen here, until Transdev decided to promote its own company name instead. BTS had acquired the contract for the 114 in 1991 and this batch of East Lanx bodied Volvos was bought for a renewal of that contract in 2004. Mm -hmm. 
London Sovereign took over the contract for Route 13 in 2001, shortly before being taken over by Transdev's London United Company. This batch of Scania Omnideckers was bought in 2005 for the conversion of the 13 to low floor. They carried this livery for about a year until the Transdev corporate scheme and fleet name were adopted. The Scania Omnidecker was introduced in 2003. The bodywork was essentially the same as the Millennium body seen on the previous model, but the dash panel was changed to Scania's own design. The Omnidecker stayed in production until 2006, and East Lanx collapsed the following year. The Obtes Solo is one of the most successful British small buses and nearly 4,000 were built between its launch in 98 and 2012 when production shifted to the new Solo SR. This is one of a batch of 10 bought in 1998 for Route C1. Travel London was a subsidiary of the National Express Group but it was sold off to Limebourne Coaches in August 2000 which in turn was taken over by Connex the following year. In 2005, this bus was sold back to Travel West Midlands and worked in Coventry until 2012. The Dennis Dart SLF, standing for Super Low Floor, was another even more successful design. It was launched in 1996 and nearly 11,000 examples were built during 19 years of production. This is an early example with Plaxton Pointer 2 bodywork delivered in 1999. Plaxton became part of Transbus in 2000 and for a while the Dart SLF was sold as the Transbus Dart SLF. After the collapse of Transbus in 2004, the Dart SLF and the original Plaxton Pointer 2 body design were marketed as an Alexander Dennis product until being replaced by the Enviro 200 in 2008. In 1998, Dennis launched the Dart MPD, standing for Mini Pointer Dart. It was 8.8 .8 metres long and designed to compete with other MIDI buses, such as the Optair Solo. This one was the last of a batch of nine delivered to Metroline for service W5, which they took over from MTL in 2001. They stayed there until 2011 when the contract passed to Hackney Community Transport. This bus eventually went to Herbert's Travel in Bedfordshire. DLD193 was one of a batch of 14 10.1 metre darts delivered to Metroline in July 2001 for operation on the 95 from Harlesden Garage. The route and the vehicles moved to Perivale in 2002. It spent a year at Potter's Bar before being withdrawn and sold in 2011. Corgi's original Omnibus company is one of three manufacturers that have produced models of the Dennis Dart SLF. I'll leave you to decide which one you think is best. In May 2002, eight Dennis Darts were allocated to Stamford Brook Garage for use on Route 272 between Chiswick Grove Park and Shepherd's Bush Green. This body is badged as Alexander's because production had been moved to Falkirk under Transbus and the Pointer 2 was no longer considered a Plaxton product. This bus carries the original London United livery and logo, shortly before Transdev decided to substitute its own fleet name on London United and London Sovereign vehicles. In 2002, Arriva's contract for the 192 route was renewed but with a specification for new low floor buses. Arriva bought a batch of 11 8.8 .8 metre mini pointer darts for allocation to Enfield Garage. This particular bus was withdrawn in 2012 and transferred to Arriva Guildford and West Surrey. This model by Creative Master Northcord was issued in a twin pack of Arriva MPDs, the other being a blue and cream Arriva Medway Towns example. Mm -hmm. 
Articulated buses were first trialled in West London towards the end of 2001, after which they were gradually rolled out to Red Arrow routes 507, 521 and a further 10 busy radial routes into central London. After 2005, no more routes were converted, possibly due to difficulties finding garage space, loss of revenue from fare evasion and a lot of bad publicity arising from engine fires and injuries to cyclists. In the 2008 election for Mayor of London, Boris Johnson stood on a platform of replacing the articulated buses with something more appropriate for London. We'll see what happened next in a bit. After being sold in 2011, this bus went to work the Bath Road Park and Ride service in Bristol. In July 2009, Go Ahead withdrew the bendy buses from Red Arrow Route 507 and replaced them with 15 two-axle rigid Citaros like this one. They worked well and lasted on the route until September 2016 when they moved to the 108 after being displaced by BYD battery buses with Alexander Dennis bodywork. Unlike the Citaro Arctics, rigid Citaros, although very popular in Europe, were never a common sight in London, but they did first appear from 2002 on the Riverside bus RV1, which until its withdrawal this year was always a test track for new and innovative vehicles, like London's only hydrogen-powered fuel cell buses. This bus is one of the first batch of 28 10.1 metre Dennis Tridents with Enviro 400 bodywork, delivered to Metroline in the winter of 0506. Metroline was an early customer for this model and went on to buy over 300 of them in either diesel or hybrid form. This model was a private commission for staff only, showing the correct shade of blue skirt. CMNL did produce a version of the Metroline E400 for general release, but interestingly chose to model the light blue shade of skirt, which was only experimental and not perpetuated. In 2007, the contract for the E6 was taken over from Travel London by Metroline, and DES801 is one of a batch of 12 8.9 metre Alexander Dennis Enviro 200s delivered for use on this service. In 2012, when the contract was renewed, the Enviro 200s on the E6 were replaced by bigger vehicles, MCV bodied MANs, and they were dispersed to other parts, notably Potter's Bar, to replace Dennis Darts on routes there, including non TFL services. This is one of a batch of 13 E200s bought in 2008 for the renewal of the 192 contract when they replaced the PDL class of mini pointer darts as seen earlier. The Enviro stayed on Route 192 until 2014 when the contract passed to Go Ahead London General. At 8.9 metres, this is the shortest of four different lengths of E200 operated by Arriva London, the longest being the ENX which is 10.8 metres. I don't know what went wrong with Creative Masters paint palette with this model, but they painted it in a very light, almost orangey shade of red. As you can see, this model has an engine compartment that opens even when you don't want it to. This is one of 13 37 seat single door E200s bought in 2008 by Metroline specifically for the 84 service between Barnet and St Albans. DEL856 is seen here in what was the standard Metroline livery when delivered, but after repaint the whole batch acquired a striking new red, white and blue livery to indicate their use on commercial non-TFL services like the 84. These vehicles are permanently assigned to Potter's Bar Garage for Hertfordshire services because of their electronic destination displays, something which TFL still prohibits on its contract routes. Some of this batch have now been sold. By 2011, having produced models of buses from all round the world, Creative Master Northcourt unfortunately ran into financial difficulties and ceased trading. But that wasn't the end of the story, because Danny Chan's Northcourt company bought up many of the company's assets with a view to staying in production. It took a while to find a suitable factory to produce the models, but very slowly the Northcourt model company began to pick up where CMNL left off. Northcourt issued a couple of models that had been left outstanding when the old company ceased trading, but then embarked on bringing a completely new model to the British market, which you'll see in a little while. 
This final section will take us more or less up to the present day. London's buses are currently enjoying a period of relative stability. The tendering regime is well established and politicians went cold on the idea of full deregulation for the capital a long time ago. First Group may have left London altogether, but there's still money to be made out of operating buses in London. Both Go Ahead London General and Metro Line have turnovers in excess of £100 million. And while the big bus groups may have strong position in the capital, there are still opportunities for others to enter the market. I'm thinking particularly of players like Hackney Community Transport and Sullivan Buses. London's buses are now all red again. The last vestiges of the company colours, which came to symbolise privatisation and tendering, have been removed. So, here are the last few all-red London bus models to bring us up to date. Being a good customer of the E400, Metroline was one of the first British operators to try out the new version with hybrid drivetrain in 2008. This is one of the initial batch of five allocated to Cricklewood for Route 16. TfL branded these buses in a very eye-catching livery and they marked the beginning of a policy to clean up the air in central London by replacing diesel buses with hybrid or battery electric buses. All new single-deckers entering service in central London from 2020 onwards will have to be emission-free, either battery electric or powered by hydrogen fuel cells, with a long-term goal of making all buses in the London area emission-free by 2037. The Scania Omnicity was an all-Scania product launched in 2006. It featured an updated Euro 4 engine and Scania bodywork built in Poland. In 2006, Stagecoach moved out of London and sold the East London and Selkent companies to an Australian investment bank. The new owners placed large orders for new Scania Omnicities, and a total of 174 were purchased between November 08 and August 10. These all passed into Stagecoach ownership when the London operations were reacquired in October 2010. This model shows a Scania Omnicity as it appeared under the bank's ownership. This model shows another of the East London Scania Omnicities as it appeared after 2010 when it joined the Stagecoach London fleet. Three years elapsed between the release of the last model and this one because, although this model was released in Creative Master North Cord packaging, it was actually one of the first products of the new North Cord company after it got back into production. It carries promotional branding for Scania UK. This casting by Northcourt is of a later model E200, showing its slightly revised front-end treatment. RATP in London has been a big customer of the E200, having so far taken 108 for London Sovereign, 271 for London United, and not forgetting Quality Line, who've also had 17 from New. The E200s replaced Dennis Darts on the H98 in 2011. The H98 route was new in 1990 and has always been with London United, who have also used it to try out a small batch of Optair battery buses. When he was elected Mayor of London in 2008, Boris Johnson announced a competition to design a new bus for London to replace the much disliked articulated buses. The winning design was by Heatherwick Studios and the chosen manufacturer was Wright Bus in Northern Ireland. The first working prototype was unveiled in December 2011. Despite the very high unit cost, Johnson, who was re-elected in 2012, signed an order for the first 600 vehicles and they started to enter service from June 2013 onwards. This model shows the back door in the closed position. In this example, the rear platform door is open. On the first six routes to get these buses, the rear platform doors were kept open between stops and a platform supervisor was employed to ensure passenger safety. But everyone soon realised that this was just a costly gimmick and from 2016 all the doors stayed shut when the bus was moving. 
the new mayor, Sadiq Khan, cancelled the programme in 2016 and no more than a thousand were built, using an obscene amount of public money, £294 million to be precise. No other bus operators ordered the vehicle, the production line has been shut, and history will probably see the Boris Master as a vanity project and an evolutionary dead end in the development of the British bus. The Volvo B7TL was superseded by the two-axle version of the Volvo B9TL, which was produced between 2006 and 2014. Despite initial orders from First, Go Ahead London and Metro Line, this bus was not terribly successful in London. However, its stablemate, the Volvo B5LH Hybrid, with Wright Gemini Mark II and Mark III bodies, has become a very common sight in London since its introduction in 2009, and, along with the Alexander Dennis Enviro 400, has every claim to be the modern, classic London bus. In 2014, Alexander Dennis unveiled the eventual successor to the very popular Enviro 400, which was the E400 MMC. The MMC is standing for Major Model Change. It's available with a Euro 6 diesel engine or a hybrid drivetrain, and this particular model is of a hybrid version from a batch of 14 delivered to Metroline in 2015 for replacement of the diesel Enviro 400s on the 332, from Bank Park to Paddington, a relatively new route dating only from 2007. Although this is one of the older E400 MMCs, this was actually the most recent London model to be issued by Northcourt. Stagecoach started taking deliveries of E400 MMCs in June 2015. This is one of a batch of 40 delivered in March and April 2016 and used to replace Dennis Tridents at North Street Romford Garage and specifically for the renewal of the 294 contract which required new double-deckers. This batch of vehicles have the Euro 6 diesel engine option. Since the 498 route started in December 2005, it's been operated by Arriva, First Bus and Blue Triangle, which is a trading arm of Go Ahead London General, before passing to Stagecoach East London in June 2015. Chronologically, the newest of the models I'm showing you is this E400 MMC belonging to Go Ahead London General. It was one of a batch of 47 hybrids delivered between November 2016 and January 2017. The vehicles were required for the Putney Low Emission Bus Zone launched by Sadiq Khan in March 2017, which was the first of 11 such zones where low emission buses are made compulsory in order to improve air quality. By August 2019, London General had taken 260 of these hybrid E400s into stock and it should be noted that all double-deck buses working in central London are now required to be hybrid or battery powered. Over the last 30 years, collectors have been treated to some really wonderful die-cast models and they just keep getting better and better in terms of detail and authenticity. Of course, the market has contracted since the 90s. For example, in its heyday, the original Omnibus company used to issue two models a month, and now we're lucky to get two models a year. Also, Backman, the model railway people, took over the exclusive first editions range in 2016, but apart from a few new liveries on existing castings, we're still waiting for a completely new model from them. Two Hong Kong-based manufacturers have promised models of Alexander Dennis's Enviro 200 MMC in London Bus Red, but there's still no sign of either of these. You've only got to flick through something like the London Bus Guide to realise that there's a huge number of London Bus types still to be modelled by die-cast manufacturers, so this review has really only scratched the surface. I'm going to leave you with something a little different. It's not a London Bus, it's a Hong Kong Bus but of a type which is common in London, namely the Wright Gemini 3 on Volvo's chassis. This is a wonderfully detailed model, and the hope is that the manufacturer will take a punt and issue a two-axle London version before too long, something that would certainly find its way into a great many collections. Goodbye, and thanks for watching. Music